I'm back, and so is David's internet connection, which is perfect as we take a deeper dive into the Buccaneers' week one victory over the Dallas Cowboys. We get some updates on Chris Godwin and Donovan Smith's injuries, and I hand out my game balls. Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And for those of you with a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick, we are also available on the 10 Tampa Bay Plus app. So you can check us out on there as well. I am Jay Jarko, joined by my co-host one mr david harrison you can check out all of his written work over at sports illustrated's bucks game day.com check out mine over at sb nations bucks nation.com and of course follow everything on twitter at locked on bucks at jarco underscore bucks and at d harrison 82 thanks again for making us your first view or listen of the day today's episode is brought to you by prize picks prize picks is daily fantasy made easy pick two to five players and they score more or less than their prize picks projection you could win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. We've got voicemails. Just like football returns, the voicemail box has also come alive. So we're going to get to some of those here in a bit. But first, we have some clarity now on Chris Godwin's newest injury, also on yeah, Donovan Smith's. Both coming Sunday night against the Dallas Cowboys. Todd Bowles speaking on Monday about Chris Godwin's hamstring injury, saying, quote, I don't think it's as serious as we thought it was, but it all depends on how his treatment goes and how he heals. Hopefully we'll have him back sooner rather than later. James, I like the fact that it's not as bad as they thought it was. My curiosity is how bad did they thought it was? Thankfully, thought? it's not an ACL aggravation or re tear or anything like that because that would just be everyone's nightmare. But my question to you is other than my broken English, does sooner rather than later mean that I'm going to see CG 14 on the field in Nolan's next weekend? It does not. Ugh. Um, I think we're looking at week four. Uh, you, you saw the hamstring issues that. Mike Evans and, and Russell Gage we're dealing with. You've had Zion McCollum out now for about three weeks with a hamstring issue. The fact that it's not as bad as they thought it was is a positive sign, yeah. but you don't want to rush it back. You absolutely, I mean, it was great to see him on the field. He, I, he got the first pass of the, of the game for the Buccaneers and, it was a nice catch and run for 25 yards. And it was, it was great to see him get involved immediately. Yeah. Um, but at this stage, you don't want to rush him back from a hamstring injury because it's not as bad as they think they thought it once was. But if you rush him back a little too soon, then it's going to get as bad as they thought that it was going to think that they thought that it might've been. Absolutely. So, um, I'm done. I'm done teasing you, uh, at this stage, but yeah, you rush him back too soon. He's going to aggravate it even worse and you're looking at even more time off. So I think it's safe to say he's a no go for Nola, Nolans, Nola. Uh, optimistic for green Bay, but might be better off if he sits that one out to bring it back for the Kansas city game and they'll be ready to rock. Yeah. I think you're living Kansas city at the earliest. Honestly, I think that's, that's the situation as well. Uh, and the good news is I don't think you really need him um, to beat Green Bay because uh, nobody in Green Bay can catch. So uh, let's let's I'm glad you said that. Let's hit the pause button on this for a moment. Let's rewind. I, I did a lot of rewinding on the the Friday episode. Let's rewind the clock for a moment and remember that the New Orleans Saints absolutely boat raced green bay in week one last year it was like 38 to 3 or 35 to 3 something obscene yeah let's let's not bury the packers quite yet listen 
The Packers aren't making the playoffs. They're going to finish last in the NFC North. Why Top five this? draft pick is inbound. Um, also, the broken English thing in the beginning was on purpose, just for anybody out there who maybe thinks I'm having a stroke. I'm not. It was supposed <laughs> to be funny. Um, I yeah. I enjoyed playing off of it. I don't think that Chris Godwin. I mean, look, just look at this team's history, right? With Mike Evans, with with anybody, like you said, Sion McCollum with his hamstring injury. I mean, there there is a reason that the Buccaneers have invested as much as they have in sports science and medicine and, and all this other stuff that there's no way they're going to rush Chris Godwin back. Like the, the fact that he was even ready to go for week one and not only ready to go, but I mean, I tweeted at one point during the game, Chris Godwin is playing and Chris Godwin is playing with the second playing in all caps following that explosive play on the first pass uh, completion of the game for the Buccaneers. So, I mean, uh, Chris looked great. He was looking good. Unfortunate, uh, you know, obviously to lose him to a hamstring. That's, not at all what you want, but the Buccaneers come away with the win. So let's not tempt fates and play with fire too much. Let's let him rest. Uh, let's go out there, keep Mike Evans on the field. Julio Jones continue to get better. Hopefully Russell Gage even more and see what Brashad Perryman maybe uh, can do as well. So I agree. I think week four is probably the soonest that you're going to see him, which would be sooner rather than later because later would be week five or after. That is is an accurate assessment of sooner rather than that later. An accurate measurement of calendar usage. Uh, yeah, he'll be back in just in time for the next primetime game that throws us all through a loop because primetime games are the best. Chris Godwin wasn't the only banging, Buccaneer banged up on Sunday, though. Um, Iron Man Donovan Smith also left the game with a arm injury. So Bowles commented on Monday about Donovan Smith saying, quote, he's got a hyperextended elbow. It's a pain tolerance thing, so he's pretty sore right now. We'll monitor him during the week, end quote. Now, this is a guy, you know, he gave up the sack to Mike Parsons. I get it. But he allowed, what was it, like one sack last year? Yeah. I mean, he he plays Pretty extremely. Uh, yeah, he, he plays extremely, extremely well. He got beat on a great move by Micah Parsons, as a lot of other, you know, stout left tackles in the NFL do and will for the rest of this season. Uh, yeah. And I don't think there's any question that the uh, performance of the left side of the line on Sunday night took a little bit of a dip when Donovan went off the field and to the locker room. Yeah, a little bit is an is a clear understatement. Yeah, I mean, we you know we came into this game uh, against the Dallas Cowboys looking to see if Donovan Smith was going to degrade in performance without Ali Marpet next to him, and I think it's safe to say just from the small sample size that we did get to see that no, his performance wasn't degrading. Again, Michael Parsons is a very very talented young pass rusher for a reason, or he's known as one for for a very good reason. Um, and he's going to give a lot of people a lot of fits all season long. And then, yeah, and you, again, you clearly saw, like you just mentioned, how much worse things got when Donovan Smith wasn't on the field. It kind of goes back to when the contract was being talked about, right? We kept telling people, James, look, you may not love Donovan Smith, but there ain't no better options out there. Well, now, not only are there not better options, Donovan Smith is actually a good option. Uh, so hopefully they get him back again sooner rather than later to steal Todd Bowles' phrasing from Chris Godwin's comments. Um but good to know that it's not like a, a you know a break or a fracture or a torn anything. Uh, so that's that's a positive at least. But man, this this offensive line, this Buccaneers team cannot afford any more offensive line injuries. No, it's brutal. It's very frustrating. And um, you know, yeah, we we've said it time and time again. Be careful what you wish for. Those that continue to still you know poo poo all over Donovan Smith okay. and. Here it is. Yeah, you got the the 45 year old goat back there behind one returning starter from last year in Tristan Wirfs. And you know, that's probably a you know what? I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. We're gonna talk about it coming up in just a moment. Josh Wells season is upon us, ladies oh, and Lord. gentlemen. I shared the best post game observation show you could possibly have from a Marriott internet connection in Landover, Maryland last night. So I don't know what James is possibly going to say to add to the conversation, but I'm super excited to see him try. But before we do that, we need to talk about less real football. I'm talking about fantasy football. Do you love fantasy football, but you hate waiting a whole week 
before finding out if the next guy you bench is going to explode while the rest of your squad wastes your starting slots like Mr. Kittle did for the Lockdown Bucks fantasy squad. Congratulations to the first member of our fantasy league to beat our team. If you are like me, then it sounds like you like daily fantasy or you would like daily fantasy. It would be your type of game. Not only that, but customizing the parameters and how you win or lose might sound even better. That's what you get with our friends at Prize Picks. I use the app this weekend, and one thing that really made me happy, James, was Jameis Winston hitting the over on his rushing yards by just half a yard. Winston, plus the bonus on Tom Brady, who only had to throw one yard or more, got me my first prize picks win of the year. And now I've got my eyes on Thursday night, where I'm thinking I might be taking Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert to throw more than 285 and a half yards against the Chiefs defense and Patrick Mahomes to rush for more than 19 and a half yards against the Chargers defense. That one might be a little bit iffy. Just like that, it's done. I've got my own fantasy game under my own terms, and no matter what you do, I can still win. All you have to do, all I have to do, pick two to five players, get more or less of the given stat line, and you've got a game. Go big, and you win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people like me or James. It's just you versus the projections. NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, pretty much anything you think of, cricket, and even more. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users, you get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. Don't forget that promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Well, consuming our next partner's product is actually good for you, unlike David's ability to set a fantasy lineup with a player that was announced out uh, like two days before the game started. Some of us are but busy. I started taking AG1 because I wanted to feel better. You guys know I have a crazy sleep schedule. You know, I have all this stuff going on. It's pretty easy to fall into the trap of eating really unhealthy foods. I don't know, maybe, you know, little Debbie zebra cakes for breakfast. They're just like donuts, but don't judge me. Anyway, I switched over to AG1 because it was helping me feel better. With one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. I like to go with half water, half pineapple juice, maybe half water, and then a quarter pineapple juice, a quarter apple juice. You know, mix it up a little bit uh, and drink it in the morning on my way to work and it gets my day going right. If I'm running late, I can bring it with me, literally bend my dietary needs to my schedule. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, this will still work for you. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thanks again for making the Locked On Bucks podcast your first listen or view every single day. Since James took the night off Sunday, he did not. I'm going to sit back now and I'm going to watch and listen to, uh, to James tell everybody what he thought about perhaps the most exciting Buccaneers game in franchise history. It was not. But before we do that, we're going to hear from what I assume will be a happy Buccaneers fan via the voicemail line. Probably is. Fire the cannons, boys. Matt from Morvin, Georgia here. Back for another season of Bucks football. Physical football is what we saw tonight. Good tackling, good pressure up front, good running. I can't remember the last time we ran the football like we did tonight. Exciting game. Hats off to Micah Parsons. He, he gave us hell tonight, but we were able to overcome. What a game. You know, the, the offensive line's making me a little bit nervous, but you know, if we can run the football like this and play defense like we played tonight, it's going to be all right, boys. Too late to fire the mini cannon, but I'll do it sometime tomorrow. Let's go, Bucks! Fire the cannon! First of all, Matt, it's never too late to fire the mini cannon. 
what is life without at least one noise violation? Um, as somebody who has neighbors that have a tendency to be very loud, very late at night, I'm going to applaud Matt's restraint, uh, and <laughs> in not infuriating the people around him. Also, uh, Matt posted some photos on social media that he killed a rattlesnake by impaling its head with a lopper. Um, with a what? A lopper. You oh, know, like, you said a whopper. It was like you uh, threw a sandwich at a snake and killed it. I mean, I think yeah, Matt that would was, be nicknamed Thor after if that was his ability. That was a whole big, whole big nope from James over here. Like, mm, I would have run away screaming and crying as fast as I could. The rattlesnake would beat me, no doubt. Um, but Matt, appreciate the call, and you actually led me perfectly into what I was going to talk about. As you noticed in, in segment one, I started to say something. I'm like, you know what? No, nope, we're going to hold off. We're going to talk about it here because I'm going to start things off by talking about the offense. And as you guys know, I run the Bucks Nation Twitter account during game days. And uh, it took all of the first drive, both defensively and offensively, for people to start losing their minds. Uh, talk about uh, massive overreaction. but. A lot of people complaining, why are we running so much? Why are we running so much? Why do we always run on first down? Why are we running so much? David, I think a lot of the commitment to the run, we already knew Todd Bowles was going to be committed to the run. But I think a lot of the commitment came from the fact that the offensive line is shaky. And when Donovan Smith went out, it got even shakier. We weren't sure what Robert Hainsey was going to be, even though he's looked good in, in the process leading up to the game against the Cowboys. Definitely had no idea what was going to be going on at left guard. So I think the commitment to the run was a calculated risk by the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to minimize the dropbacks by Tom Brady. Because he got sacked a couple of times. He was hurried quite a few times. He was hit a couple of times. Um, and you go back, he threw the ball like over 40 times against the Cowboys last year. And I think he ended up with around 25 passes on, on Sunday night. Meanwhile, Leonard Fournette had his most rushing yards as a Buccaneer against the Cowboys, dictated the pace of the game, dictated the clock. They didn't get in the end zone as many times as they would have liked to. But I think it was the commitment and the success of the run game uh, is certainly going to be something that we see throughout the season to mitigate the risk of Tom Brady getting taken down, taken out behind a, a line that is not as solid as it was a year ago. Yeah, look, let's let's keep Tom healthy and, and upright for the games that you need him to throw the ball 30, 40 times, right? Those games are going to come. But in this game, for one, the running game was working, right? Like Matt said, like that, like... Uh, I don't have my notebook in front of me anymore, but what did I say yesterday? I think Leonard Fournette had, what, like six or seven explosive runs yeah. just by himself. I mean, he had more explosive plays himself as a runner than a lot of teams have in an entire game. And then to your point, James, uh, again, some people love PFF grades. Some people hate them. Got it, whatever it is. But only two Buccaneers offensive linemen uh, last night had pass blocking grades above 60. And that was Shaq Mason and, of course, Tristan Wirfs. And look, Tristan Wirfs, 71.4. So your best pass blocking lineman last night, still like 71.4. Like If you're in grade school, like you, you ain't getting a new bike for that report card. You know what I'm saying? So I uh, love Tristan, obviously, but there is some, some work to be done on this offensive line uh, moving forward. So when you don't need to put time at risk, don't put him at risk. Yeah, it's good. The, the offensive line is definitely even more concerning for – their next game than it was going into last night. But real quick, I'm not going to stick on the defense too much. They were phenomenal. In fact, the the some of the overreaction that I was talking about had somebody tweet after the Cowboys came away with a field goal that this is the most overhyped, overrated defensive unit in the NFL, and they couldn't stop a nosebleed. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Get to the fourth quarter. Credit, and I, I wish I wrote down the Twitter handle. Credit to this person, though. They replied to themselves with the Gordon Ramsay gif of the what are you, an idiot sandwich. 
yeah. uh, calling themselves out for a massive overreaction to the first drive of the season. <laughs> but this this defense was outstanding against the Cowboys. And you could say all you want about, oh, well, they only had CD Lamb. There was no Michael Gallup, no Amari Cooper, yada, 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 yada. I don't care. You went in there to Dallas against the the number one scoring team in the NFL a season ago who still had C.D. Lamb and still had uh, you know Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard and Dak Prescott and absolutely took it to him. So amazing game by the defense. Yeah, listen, for everybody out there talking about how many weapons the Cowboys didn't have in this game, um, I can tell you from – being on the recording when it was said that one of the locked on Cowboys hosts definitely predicted that CD lamb could possibly lead the entire league in receiving. So yeah, uh, let's not, let's not undersell. Like it's, it's funny how we're going to undersell. I'm not talking about Bucks fans. Pocket. Okay. I'm talking about Cowboys. fans. We're going to undersell the amount of weapons Zach Prescott has around him after he's getting his butt whooped and, and look, the thumb injury, he was already, he was already struggling before that thumb injury. Oh ever became a thing just to rehash uh my favorite stat of the night just to support what you're saying james uh the dallas cowboys got into tampa bay territory three times Mm -hmm. three times tom brady gave them the football on their own 48 yard line the cowboys made it to the 50 didn't even get into buccaneers territory i don't care who your weapons are you get held out of opposing territory just we're not even talking field goal range guys we're talking the 49 all but three drives in the game, you got worked. The, Dow- the, the Dallas Cowboys, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense absolutely deserves credit for that. And it's going to be real hard to lead the league in receiving when you get two receptions on 11 targets. Yeah. You know who it wasn't would have gotten way more receptions on 11 targets? Christian the Watson actual, of the Green Bay Packers. The actual best receiver in the NFL, Justin Jefferson. Coming up in just a moment, I am going to be passing out my game balls. And judging from the live chat on YouTube last night, uh, some of you are going to like what I have to say. But first, betonline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchup news, and podcasts including this year's opening week's games. BetOnline is also your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including the MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Wrapping things up here on the Locked On Box podcast. David, let's hear from one more very satisfied customer about the Buccaneers' win over the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, David, James. Hey, I'm happy for this win. Tommy was out there throwing the ball around. The offense looked a little bit out of sync. I'm expecting to clean that up during practice this week, but uh, happy for the win. I've got concerns about our injuries today, but. Besides that, we're all right. Go Bucks! All right. Thank you very much for the call. And I'm going to say this real quick, David, before we recap uh, the game balls that you handed out. If anyone ever says to you ever again that the preseason doesn't matter, take a look at the Buccaneers offense Sunday night who couldn't seem to get out of their own way because they had literally one drive together in the preseason, which ironically enough also ended in a field goal and take a look at the Cincinnati Bengals offense who should Mm. have absolutely Mm. dominated the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Instead five turnovers by Joe Burrow sacked seven times. And that was a unit. The offensive line Burrow, the receivers mix in all of them. Not one snap in preseason. It yeah. does matter, just not the way people want it to. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, there, there's two extremes. It doesn't matter at all, and it matters immensely, and the answer is always in the middle, right? And and the Bengals found out really re- in a really hard way that they uh, they probably should have gone in that middle ground a little bit. Alex Kappa probably wishing he was playing football in Dallas uh, this weekend. Uh, yeah, well, and and 
it would it would have been nice to keep him. But hey, no. you go get your bag, big fella. Yeah, and hey, Shaq Mason, you know. Oh, Mason was fantastic. Yeah, not not a bad debut. So game balls last night. I gave my game balls, and yes, I took pretty much all of the easy answers because you know what? I was tired. It was late. I didn't really have very good internet. I was just super impressed with the amount of people that were still hanging with me. Uh, Bucks fans, you guys are the realist. I, I will I will give you credit for that because I know it was not the cleanest live episode that we have ever done. But real quick, my game balls went to, of course, Leonard Fournette, who I have since dubbed Love to See It Lenny because you love to see 21 carries, 127 yards, and even two catches, 10 yards. You love to see all of it. Love to see it, Lenny, getting my first game ball. Mike Evans, five catches, 71 yards, the only touchdown scored this season on Sunday Night Football. Devin White, eight tackles, two sacks. Uh, those were my three game balls, James. Uh, I'll have you know, we have my son to thank for that Mike Evans touchdown. Dude. Uh, as that drive began, he walked out of the room, uh -huh. and then he comes back wearing his Mike Evans jersey Let's go. Uh, that that Mike Evans so kindly signed for him. There you go. And and I was like, "You're." I was like, "Please don't spill anything on that." He's like, "We got to get something going for the offense, you know." I so this is what I'm doing. There you go. By God, it worked. So not superstitious, but you know. But I am a little stitious anyway. Uh, my game balls. Uh, I am going to start with my predictive player of the game. Now, he didn't come away with the stat line that I had predicted and uh, and through David, through Luke, when I said it. But Shaq Barrett, four pressures, a hit, three hurries. It seemed like he was consistently coming after Dak Prescott. And unfortunately for Dak, the, the one time that he really did get to him is what caused that thumb injury, uh, you know, on... You know, he did it once, and then two plays later, it, it happened again. So uh, hopefully Dak has a, a full and speedy recovery. But Shaq Barrett was absolutely a, a big reason why the Cowboys' offense was not in sync, and it was because he was consistently getting pressure. He was consistently collapsing that pocket. He was getting after things, and, and even though it didn't show up on the stat line, he had an incredibly effective game. David, we've talked about it numerous times that great games don't always show up on the stat sheet, uh, usually in the case of Vita Vea, but Shaq Barrett had a phenomenal game. My next one is going to go to the new guy, Julio. Uh, it was so weird, so weird, typing out uh, Brady complete to Julio yeah. on, on Twitter, and I've decided we're living in a simulation. None of this is real. But Julio Jones, three receptions for 69 yards, of course, had that big 48-yard reception that set up a Ryan suck-up field goal before the end of the half. But he also had two rushes for 17 yards, so five touches, 86 yards for Julio in his debut. Uh, a great game, and I, I expect him to be utilized very, very heavily against the New Orleans Saints uh, coming up this weekend, but my final game ball is going to go to uh, the guy who got the takeaway for the Buccaneers defense. And that of course is Antoine Winfield jr. He did have the interception to Carlton Davis's credit. Uh, Antoine kind of cut off Carlton. I think either way that ball was going to get picked off. Uh, but Antoine was the guy that ended up coming down with it. But he also quietly had the second most tackles on the team. He had six combined and five solo tackles, tying him uh, with Levante David. So Antoine Winfield Jr., outside of the interception, still quietly had a very, very good game for this defense. And, and I can't say enough about how well the defense played. You just really have to hope that they're able to do that this weekend in New Orleans. But We'll, we'll get to that game later on. I'll, I'll start talking about that with Evan Klosky on tomorrow's episode. But, David, let's go ahead and jump over to one more voicemail before we get out of here. Before we do that, uh oh, are we wrong for not giving Ryan Suck of a game ball? No. Listen, well, I mean, he's at I least getting that. a fantasy game ball, James, because Ryan Suck up's 15 fantasy points last night are the only reason that we and i say we because this is a co show i had fantasy no say team. 
I had no say in the draft. We uh, it's, are it's only important. eight Javante Williams Monday Night Football points away from actually winning our matchup. All because our kicker scored 15 points. Would have been nice if he, you know, made the fifth one. Yes, that, that absolutely would have been nice. But on a day when all kickers uh, decided that they were going to stink. Just collectively went on strike. Shout there. out Young Way Koo Oof. and the Atlanta Falcons. Young Way Koo is is my highest scoring fantasy player right now. Young Way Koo is a Korean football superstar. Yes, sir. he absolutely is. But he is currently the highest scoring player on my fantasy roster that has guys like Austin Eckler, That's and Alvin Kamara, That's and sad. Aaron Jones, and T. Higgins. <sighs> Fantasy football is stupid, and I hate it. You know who's going to be happier than you right now? Tyler from Boston. Oh, Tyler from Boston. What's up, boys? It's Tyler from Boston. Well, I don't think it was the prettiest win or the win with the most fireworks you'll see, but I'll take it because it's a dub against uh, the Cowboys and on the road. Uh, but especially considering it's just week one, I know these times these guys need time to gel. So I'm expecting um, things to pick up a little bit. But uh, yeah, the defense played awesome. I'm not sure if it, if on the game as a whole, if it was impacted more by their great defensive play or, you know, and you could speak for both sides. Was it great defensive play or was it um, offensive line struggles? Um, I'm a little worried going into next week, considering some of the injuries we have. I hope we continue to get healthy. But, um, you know, this is the next man-up team, and I was happy to see us uh, get the started, get the season started on the right foot. So let's go. Football's back, baby. Go Bucks. All right. Matt Greco and Tyler from Boston, thank you very much for the voicemails. We have got to get out of here. We want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or view of the day. Now make your second listen, the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It is also free and available wherever you get your podcast. I will be back tomorrow with 10 Tampa Bay's Evan Klosky. I'll get his thoughts on the Dallas game. Then it's time to turn the page and let's start looking ahead to the divisional matchup in New Orleans against Jameis Winston, Michael Thomas, and Marshawn Rat Um, hmm. So if you have any, uh, any questions, any reactions, anything at all that you would like to contribute to the show, of course, you could send those in to locked on bucks podcast at gmail.com or be like Matt Greco and Tyler from Boston and give us a call at 813-444-5841. Check out David's work over at bucksgameday.com. Check out mine at bucksnation.com. Make sure you're following all the action on Twitter at locked on bucks at jarco underscore bucks and at dharrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire those cannons. We thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks.